Welcome to PC Woods Kids Tech Talk. Today I wanted to show you the Sapphire HD4650 AGP graphics card. That's right, you heard it, AGP. Why? Because I know that many of you have older systems with integrated video and you have an AGP slot just sitting there. It's an older PC that you've got from maybe three, four, five years ago and you wish you could install a card. Well, this is it from Sapphire, the HD4650. And let's look at it a little bit closer. Of course it comes with the required AGP slot support for 4X and 8X. Look at the notch on that uh, slot there so you can make sure that it aligns with your current AGP slot and it's compatible. It's running the core clock 600 megahertz and the memory clock at 400 megahertz, okay? You can overclock this. But look at the size of the fan, it's a little bit small. Now, it comes with one gigs of RAM on it, DDR2, 320 stream processors on that one, two DVI out and one S video and it comes with the required dongles so that you can have an HDMI out or VGA out on that as well. Now the card itself doesn't look anything spectacular, it just needs a 6 pin power connector and a 400 watt PSU and 1 gigs of RAM okay, to run. That's the bottom line. Now looking at my test system, I picked something older that I had lying around again from about 3-4 years ago, uh, an Intel Pentium 4 3 gigahertz not overclocked, everything stock values with one gig of RAM, that's it. Running Windows XP uh, Service Pack 3, and uh, as you can see here, this is nothing fancy. So I'm, it came with an integrated graphics card and I disabled it. And I installed this card in the AGP slot that was on the motherboard, and now I'm good to go. And I can even overclock it if I want, right? Because by default, this does have 600. Uh, core clock and 400 megahertz for the memory. We want to up it a little bit. We can do that easily through the uh, Catalyst Control Center by clicking on that Auto Tune button in the right corner. So after you install the latest uh, drivers from ATI, you can then go and click on that button and let it do its thing. And that's what I got. Those are the values that I got: 700 and 540. And of course, enable the manual control fan so that way you can increase the fan speed to cool down this card. You can see the temperatures there on idle about. 45 degrees Celsius to a maximum of about 78. Now, when it comes to benchmarks, 3D Mark 06 gave me 4311 3D Marks. What does that mean? Well, when we compare 3D Marks to other cards such as the NVIDIA 8600 GT or the 8800 GTS, this one lies halfway in between those two, and it's a little bit less than the HD 4670. Okay, so it gives you a good idea here. But at least it's better than what you're running now on your integrated graphics, right? So um, can't go wrong there. Running some more benchmarks on games like Stalker Clear Sky. You can see here the average and the maximum frames per second that, that I'm getting basically on, on those benchmarks. And I also ran it at 1680 um, by 1050, of course. And you can see here also the frames per second are pretty decent on those benchmarks, again, maxed out at those uh, resolutions. Now looking at some games, of course, Call of Duty 4 would be an appropriate game for this type of PC to run. And here are the um, frames per seconds for those. Again, very, very decent results on the maxed out at those two resolutions. So I was very happy, very pleased to get those results with this video card. Then another game that I tried this on as well was the Bioshock. So many of you are familiar with that Bioshock game. And again, very, very decent results on this. Uh, so with Bioshock 2 coming out, or or um, for those of you that are interested in the latest games, I'm sure that it would be comparable in the uh, frames per second as well. I also ran the Fallout 3 on high. So you can see ultra high settings. It's going to support the latest DirectX 10.1, like I mentioned. I disabled vert vertical sync. I don't enable vertical sync for my benchmarks. And here you can see the results running Fallout 3 on those ultra high settings. Okay, so again, very, very good results for the this type of card on an AGP slot, right? Now, looking at Crisis, because everybody wants to know, well, how does it do on Crisis? Well, it actually made it. 26 frames per second, max and average 16 frames per second, running on mainstream settings, of course. Now, uh, what comes in the box? Well, I did mention a few things earlier. Obviously, it comes with the manual. You need the manual and, of course, the required driver CD, right? So you can install it, but you can always download the latest drivers from the AMD website and the dongle. So you got the uh, HDMI out dongle for video, so you can have the uh, HD video on your large screen. Uh, there's your S video out, right? So you got that, and as well as 
your component out so you got the three cables there and uh, that's always very handy in case you have uh, a system that requires that and you've got the uh, VGA out okay so DVI to VGA out as well so pretty complete package when you think about it they even threw in an extension cable so you can convert there from uh, Molex to a six pin so you can get the power in case your power supply doesn't have a six pin so um, that was pretty nice of them to add that in there so they they really considered all the options here so if you're running an older computer Sapphire really thought about it made sure that it worked on an older computer like I just tested it and had no issues with it and I was very pleased with the results as you can see so I'd like to thank Sapphire for providing it and I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching